Well, Kyle? Yes, Garrett. We're not sprouts! Sproutage is over. We're, it's over. Kiss your sprout goodbye. Green's two dads return from Garlemald and Thancred is all a flutter because there's construction at the Imperial Palace. We already have our towers spread across the world and there is a central unit being worked on. And I can't help but think of Batman. Batman? The one with Robin. Is it Batman and Robin? Which one's the which one's the one? Uh, well, there's two with Robin. The second of the two is Batman and Robin. The first one is Batman Forever. <laughs> Batman Forever with the Riddler and Two-Face when they're doing the brain drain thing and they're siphoning all the power off of the TVs and using it to make themselves, I think, smart. I don't know why that this comes to you at all. <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's no waves going into the build. We barely even see the building at the very end of all of this to jump ahead here at the beginning. We just see the silhouette of a, of a spiky tower. That is it. There's no waves going into it we don't see fan daniel and zeno sitting there getting high on the ether that they're sapping from the land are they not what the hell are they doing otherwise they are wacky apparently not fan daniel was wacky when he showed up before they started any of this stuff so Van Daniel being the way Van Daniel is has nothing to do with them sapping ether from the <laughs> land. I did not think that we were going to sit here and I was going to have to defend your Batman Forever and Walker thesis. What's the point, big boy? I love taking story elements and comparing them and using to analyze other stories. It's what I do. Same. I just don't like this one. No, it's a bad movie, but... But before we get deep into the nitty-gritty of the end of one of the greatest... I'm not going to quantify it. It like, doesn't matter that it's an expansion. It's just one of the greatest games I've played. Before we get into it, I want to remind you that there's a multitude of ways that you can support us. We, of course, have our Patreon at supportourbromance.com, the membership below. But did you know we have a store? That's at buy ourbromance.com and we just launched a ton of new designs including the one that seems pretty apt for today's video don't play on walker you'll get spoiled it is now available on the store designed by me get yourself one i hope to see it at fanfest the towers are siphoning from the land but there is a pressure release some sort of shooty into the air business that's going on on top of it and is that just excess are you burning off the oil kind of business or is it being siphoned by the new construction i think we're darkening the moon with this oh you think we're shooting at the moon well we know the moon is darkening and that xenos plans to gorge himself upon the darkened moon oh oh okay yeah that could be if it's no, firing towards the sky everything's got lunar in front of its name but it's not a flat planet so it's you know It'd be firing in all directions. Like, Kyle, I, Kyle, we're I guess you're, the getting moon is, too, you're getting too tactical for me, bro. You're getting too if tactical. If the moon is for rotating me. around the planet, it would be in sourcing different things at different times. So I guess it could work. Also, you've got uh, you've got an Asian, an actual Asian, and you've got a uh, build your own Asian and Xenos. They could both just port their asses up there and do the same creation magics that they're using to make these towers in the first place. Maybe there's some sort of structure on the moon itself that's that. Well, they said it was construction, which makes it sound like it's not being created. Well, that that's but what that's just they're just talking specifically about the the Garlean Palace there. That's this is the very beginning. Thanker comes back being like, "There's people running all over the place. They're they're re they're doing something to the Imperial Palace." Also, he mentions that they seem like they were tempered because nobody was barking orders. Everyone was just running around frantically doing what they need to do without being told. I'm into it. I am too. I love this the weaponization of tempering, mind control. It's cool. Yeah. No, we ain't talking about prohibition. What's that? Because uh, that was the temperance movement. Oh. <laughs> Liquor, 
Thy name's delirium. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Bam. But we can't think of that too long because Arnvald and Fordola are back and they're ready to use their echo to explore one of the towers outside of Alamigo. Use it for good. Actually, is it outside of Alamigo? No, we just meet in Alamigo because they end up in a tower full of Amalja, which would mean that they're actually in Thanalan. I'm learning too much about this game that I'm actually noticing my own wrong things. That's healthy. Is it? I think your journey has been deep enough. I feel like a nerd. No, okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what could have happened? Oh no! Uh, get these D&D books out of here! What have I done to myself? The guy who got his roller backpack kicked in grade school. <laughs> How could this happen? How could this ever happen? Maybe you were a nerd all along. Oh no, Kyle. That thought has never occurred to me every waking moment of my life. It was delightful. I really enjoy Fredola. I enjoy her plight. I find her an interesting exploration of the Echo, having to always explore and be subjected to everyone's emotions in the room. No wonder why she probably doesn't like people much. And I find it interesting that she's latched on to Arnvold, which is such a sweet soul that I love the idea that the two of them are adventuring and she has been able to gravitate towards him because being in his mind... Ain't that bad. He's such a sweet guy. I do feel a little bad for calling him B-plot all these years. He is B-plot, He, but it's in the essence of the hero who would have our journey if we didn't. He is the Neville Longbottom. He is us if we didn't exist. He would be the warrior of light. He's a freaking bro. He's a, he's a bro. This is the most I've ever liked and cared about Arnvold, and I think it's really effective. Alphano is obviously smitten with the man. He loves this guy. It's cool to see Alphano having so many friends. He's been on a journey, and he deserves some good friends. My favorite part of this entire opening bit was a one note from, I think it was to Taru over the Link Pearl that I, I think I've got a line on Astinian, but as soon as he heard about Lunar Bahamut, he was off. Um I'm sorry to say he went running off again the moment we told him about Bahamut. And that just to me is the most comical and on character reintroduction of Astinian for this chapter. Is He looked at his character sheet and saw that every bonus is against dragons. His time has come. <laughs> yep. Yes, it has. I am not Alphano! And off to Tiamat we go. Back to Azus Law. Back to Heaven's Ward. Yep, lots of motifs, musical, theme, jokes. It's all kind of a Heaven's Ward recap, as well as the Coils of Bahamut recap. You know, it's very much for those in the room, for those that may have forgotten. And it was great to bring back Tiamat. It is a lingering threat, a lingering opportunity. It's not a sword in the planet by any means, but... It is something that was kind of cool to be like, oh, yeah, I'm glad you remember. I remember, too. And Astinian is able to hear and kind of communicate with this essence of Nidhogg left with him. I love everything going on with Astinian here. Not gonna lie, I got a little impatient with the node BS. I was like, okay, let's go, nodes. Come on. The node come joke. On. Yeah, Don't the node care. jokes. I'm done. Cute, but I've had enough of these nodes. Let's move on. All of it was made up for by Astinian delivering lines that for me, evoke one of my favorite formative anime characters of all time, which is Vegeta. Just doing the proud Saiyan speech, but in this in this time doing a, like the proud dragon speech to Tiamat. Like, oh, it's, what, what was it? Behavior befitting, uh, shit, what's the quote? Behavior befitting a great worm. It stings the pride, doesn't it? <laughs> That, oh, that quote, Stinian rules, man. And th they're really having fun with the character I I in a way that I like. They're injecting enough humor in Astinian to humanize him while still really serving up a meaty platter of him just being cool for the sake of it. One of the things that caught me off guard about the start of this patch was, this is Bahamut. Armed with the might of Bahamut. We, in our previous video, made a distinction. Well, this is Lunar Bahamut, something very different. Everyone here is like, nope, that's a Bahamut. That is 100% a Bahamut. If it's Lunar or not, it's a Primal. There are some extra features of these Lunar Primals, like they can't temper people. 
That seems not be in their capabilities. You have the excuse of the towers, but also, I mean, we're starting up this whole like world grand company business. It'd be a little restrictive for your giant end of game war to have like 20 people able to participate. <laughs> it might be an issue. So I get why they did it from a crafted world kind of sense. Well, it also makes sense to how they're kind of fixing like the Allegan's failure with weaponizing the primals because they still just went off on their like the primals were still there. They were out for themselves once they're summoned. They're there for their own ends. What's going on with Xenos and Pandaniel is that they have found a way by manipulating the way that they are summoned to essentially weaponize them for the glory of Garlemald. And it's not a big jump to make. And this certainly isn't a retcon because we've been exploring this idea with Gabu and all these sort of primal directed influences based on how you summon them, what your will is at the time, who you sacrifice, all these different aspects can combine together to make the primal slightly different have a different tinge be more difficult maybe a different look if you're talking about eden kind of stuff we find out very quickly from tiamat that she had nothing to do with the summoning of bahamut and we find out from astinian that tiamat feels a great deal of guilt over her past part in summoning I want to say OG Bahamut, but it's actually OG Primal Bahamut. While we're talking to Tiamat about how she didn't summon Lunar Bahamut, that leads her to just say the, the only way this could be happening is if they have also done terrible things to the remaining brood of Maricidia, much the same way that the Allegans did, which, hey, we did Coils of Bahamut. I've vaguely remembered that. Actually, I'm lying. I completely forgot about all the dragons that were like locked up in there, but you remembered. You got really excited. I did, but I will give credit to the game because they took me on that journey. This Tiamat stuff is leading you into thoughts about Coils of Bahamut again. You're talking about Bahamut as the actual primal rather than just some lunar offshoot. But really what they did is they included the boss from Coils of Bahamut in the dungeon you did. And it made your brain go, oh yeah, that was the one in the room with all the dudes stuck in the walls. Oh, that's an interesting thing to do. Ooh. Oh, hell yeah. There's things oh, in the tubes. Yeah. I love a good thing, too. Yeah, series of tubes. Dude stuck in the walls. Hmm. Oh, I wonder why they did that. Yeah, dude stuck in the walls. Yeah, what an interesting thing to remind me about. And then we fixed Tiamat's brain with a porksy named Angelo. Big lasers. Yep. Extra exhausting. Still, there's an element of this is all going to go wrong someday. We're going to be under pressure. Alize or somebody's going to give up too much power. I, I think it's this is just reminding us that you run out of bullets and have to reload. That's all I think this is. Mm, I, I, I think this is just it's staying true to the, the in world rules that they set out for this, that we can't just machine gun this as a salve for everyone, that it, it takes a lot of time. You, you can't you can't you can't run and cure. It's not something you can do. But Astinian can run and ride on Tiamat's back like a total badass. Yeah, no problems there. Just gets on board and heads out. As we set our sights and our targets, more specifically, on Lunar Bahamut. So we get back to Thanalan, and we find out that Lunar Bahamut is near one of the towers out there. Specifically, Pagalthan, which I had to remind myself was apparently the seat of the Amalja's power. I've got an interesting thought about this. You are nothing but interesting thoughts, so that's not different, but hit me. When we initially started Final Fantasy XIV, it always kind of felt weird that, that the map didn't fill out. You know, the, there's load screens. When you look at the land, it's not shaped like it is on your map. There could be a disconnect there. However, having played so much World of Warcraft and seeing things like what they did with Outdoor Dungeons and Dragonflight, I find myself kind of happy that the whole map isn't filled out. Because then we get to have cool explorations deep in the game about a land you've never visited. It could just kind of appear there. It doesn't always have to be islands. It can literally be over the hill. You've just never gone there for some reason. And in this case, it was a great reason. Because it was where the lizard folk live. Why would we go there? They don't like us at all. Lizard folk? You call them lizard yeah. folk? Yeah, aren't the Amalj lizard folk? They're huge. Are they lizards? I, I think they're just really ripped ri they're, lizards. They're beefy boys. I mean, have you seen, a, you know, like the pecs on a Komodo dragon? They're decently buff. I, I mean, yeah, these, I don't know. These guys, I, at no point have I ever thought lizard looking at these dudes. They, they have beastly faces with like 
almost like cat like teeth. We break for Garrett and Kyle's very visual discussion. Upon reaching maturity, these bipedal lizard like beastmen tower oh over and I look at you. They don't look like lizards to me. Oh, it's it's you know it's a little realm reborny you know it, it can get a little it's a little blender you can see like the little, 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 little mouse doing the blue part of their face oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so Nanamo informs us that lunar Bahamut isn't or can't temper anyone oh you you spend several expansions with primals that temper and now they don't like I think it's easy to miss it is it, it, it the game does tell you but it's easy to miss and then you know the scions with Tiamat Anistinian in Super cool toe. Uh, take the fight to Pagalthan. And we eventually vanquish Lunar Bahamut. But before we get to that, I just want to talk about the dungeon for a second. Because hot damn, I really liked this dungeon. It's a pretty dungeon. It's cool. It makes use of all the gimlet dark tech that we've been working on. And it features a Maholuk. A Maholuk who is the spitting image of the Coils of Bahamut boss to get your brain juices flowing that direction. I didn't put that together either. It's his Coils of Bahamut so long ago for me. All I remember is Grandpa Phoenix and not knowing who the person who isn't Gaius is. It's honestly one of the coolest ideas the game has ever had. I Dungeon Master, I have a lot of cultists. They happen. And the <laughs> idea of capturing cultists into stasis so they can pray forever and you can program that prayer to somehow manipulate it is one of the most badass ideas i've ever heard cults happen kyle 2023 it is such a cool idea so of course i remembered it we also fought the magitech fortress which was a cool little like pylon battle I where you had to like fight jump a lot. on top yeah, yeah yeah i like that fight quite a bit i love i love Buildings that can move. <laughs> like, I, lo I love uh, Terran in StarCraft. I love the idea of large militaristic buildings that are either up on tank treads or rocket thrusters, and they can just, like, pick up and very slowly move somewhere else. Well, and the wall that crawls is such a cool motif. It, yeah. It, it's evocative. It's literally the barrier of conquest being advanced. Yep. Yep. And then here we had that nice jump. Uh, you know, ad fight on the floor, burn the thing up on the roof, jump back down, have an ad fight on the floor. It was, it was fun. It was great. Uh, I really can't say enough about how pretty this dungeon is, but the, the biggest surprise was I didn't think we were going to be done with Lunar Bahamut just by the end of this dungeon. The game goes faster than you think it will. I, honestly, I'm cool if we do this for a bit though. Like <laughs> there, there's been some times like, ah, oh, neat. We solved that issue. I'm okay fighting primals for a while. It's just, it's just me. Let's get, have Susano show up again, please. Ooh, Lunar Susano, yes. Please, but make it fully voiced. Have have Susano talk to us, please, because because we did the solo duty and no one was voiced. Revelry for Garlemald. <laughs> exactly. Revel for Garlemald. I want it. Send it. Cut it. Print it. Thank you. And at the end of this, we're treated to the cutscene where Arnvold and Fordola successfully breached the teeth door. Oh, it's so gooey. It's disgusting. I love everything inside of this tower, and simultaneously, it fuels my nightmares. It's like seeing Alien again when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. It's Geigerian. I love it. It's an interesting thing with the organic tech, because we saw quite a bit of that inside the Etherochemical Research Facility, as all the tumors were taking over the room. We are constructing the idea of that when Asians get involved in Allegan tech, it goes all gooey, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Well, they had creation magics and they were creating biological creations. It's a terrible sentence. I said creating twice in there, but you get the idea. Like, it makes sense. You've got Allegans who made everything out of what looks like space age tech, metal and crystal tech. And then you have the Asians coming in with their more biological creation magics. What other form would it take but a kind of a biomechanical Geigerian vibe? I really like it, and it makes a lot of sense to me. It does make me wonder what Emmett would think of it, because as a leader of the Allegan Empire, probably wouldn't be a big fan of Fan Daniel messing with things, or maybe he would. I think he would hate it, but Fan Daniel seemed pretty freaking happy that uh, Emmett is dead and thus freeing him of his damnable duty damnable duty free at last to live for the moment yeah uh, like, he lacks style yes yeah it, 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 i would really like to explore that more 
if Emmett felt guilty or disgusted at uh, the use of creation magics by his by his fellow Amoratines. Because I'm still whole, I'm still fairly certain that's what led to the final days and their downfall. Took it too far. I do think they made the right choice using the Amalja as the wall embedded folk here because can you imagine a bunch of sylphs? <laughs> oh my walls, god. All screaming. Oh, They're so just... goofy. <laughs> They're so I mean, goofy. Yeah, the Ixel, like uh, the turtle men, I don't think there is a beast tribe in this game that would have hit as cool. We need a future solo duty where we go into multiple of these towers and you have to right click on the wall to save the people from the wall. And it just needs to be a big old callback to a realm we're born where we're cleaning up the corpses. And when you get to the tower full of sylphs, the cast time is like a quarter of how long it takes to get an Ixel out of the wall. And they summon a badass looking Ifrit. I love the lunar look. Just like grape flavored Ifrit to me. I mean, it, it's a it's a repaint, it's a recolor, but I, I I think it's cool. I like the glow bits and the holes they got going on there. At the end of all this, Alphano sent to a pretty dark place with his worries about Arnvald's wounds, and we get to the end of five five. So before we wrap all this up, there's one more big alliance meeting in five five, and the big stuff that comes out of this is that. They meet and learn that more primals have been summoned, and Thancred informs everyone that there's a much larger tower in the Garlean capital itself. I'm now curious, and I'm not sure how important it is, but is the, like, is the tower also the palace? Because we know from the end of 555 that there's just one big tower in the distance, and I'm assuming that's also the palace that was had the construction happening. But I feel like he would have specified that the palace itself was the tower. I would assume so. Unless there is a big switch over here and the construction was for the dreamer project and the tower is the other thing. Why, why would there be two constructions? It would make sense if there's one construction, right? Yes. But, yes. And, but I also do not see Xenos being like, allow me to rebuild the palace for governmental functions. A civic buildings are required here. No, that's <laughs> like, not. No, no. no. I, I, I agree that he's probably building one thing. It might have two facilities, but he's building one unit. There's a Giga Tower in Garlemald. We should be concerned. Also, more primals have been summoned. It's not just Lunar Bahamut, so a nice escalation there. And then we all return, pray return to Mordona. And in rapid succession, Kryle wants to go petition Charlean for aid. The Scions suddenly are just like, hey, Warrior Light, um, not for nothing, but when's the last time you heard from Hydaelyn? It's an interesting question. Which, knowing what I know now, seems baiting. <laughs> Leading the witness... <laughs> I think the most interesting thing about this was the choice of dialogue because you had the option to say it's been a few expansions or kind of sort of in the Crystarium. So I chose the Crystarium answer because I was curious how it was going to go down and Yishtola immediately hits me with the technically I asked when she spoke to you and I was just like Yishtola you are a living breathing YouTube comment and I cannot abide this. <laughs> she does make a point. Highland wasn't specifically talking to us there. She was just in Welcome mode. It's like when you reinstall Windows. Hello. Welcome. Please choose your language. We don't have too much time to linger on that because we are too busy celebrating that Stinian has decided to join the Scions. And then, meanwhile, in Garlemald, Xenos is mad about the dragons and he picks a new mystery weapon that we have already seen 555, so we know it's going to be a scythe, but we don't know what's a scythe yet. I like this a lot, like him window shopping, him scrolling through Amazon looking for a weapon. I love the visual of this, just the floor just littered with stabbed weapons into it. It's a cool look. I, of course, saw Advent Children without knowing anything about Final Fantasy. So, you know, when Cloud jumps in the air and summons the many weapons, I like the many weapons thing. I like a fight in a room with many weapons that's not happening here, but I like it. And it's even more weighted as an MMO because if you play the game a lot, you would recognize a lot of these weapons and that's super cool.
Hey everybody, welcome to my actual closet. I'm, I'm literally packing for summer break because we're about to start it. This end of Shadowbringers MSQ video gonna be a two-parter so that Kyle and I get a little bit of extra time that we really need because we're getting ready for a break here to finish up the back half so that we can go and have a little summer break and get our butts to Vegas for FanFest. And hey, speaking of Vegas, we've got our meetup planned. So make sure you come out and Dexter just knocked the tripod. Okay, you wanna be in the video so bad? Speaking of FanFest, if you're going, we've got our meetup planned and ready. So come on out to the Player One video game bar. We're getting together the first night of FanFest after the convention is done at 9 p.m. at the Player One video game bar. We'll see you there. Starts at 9 p.m. Vegas time. I believe that's Pacific. But anyway, we'll see you then. Okay. All right. You want to, he wants to go to FanFest. Okay. 